But lots of clergy. We're, we're celebrating with, with John Lewis his 60th anniversary of his um, you know, dedication, or whatever that is, becoming a priest. Um, and I haven't seen him, but I think we've got Father Nick. Yes. Um, and preaching will be um, Mike French. Keeping everybody in order will be uh, Linda Biggs. So after a few moments of quiet reflection, we'll start the service. Thank you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts. By the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord who is full of compassion and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to remain what we are. And direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. 
have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, you show to those who are in error the light of your truth, that they may return to the way of righteousness. Grant to all those who are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's religion, that they may reject those things that are contrary to their profession, and follow all such things as are agreeable to the same. For our Lord Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you, and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations, no longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your offspring after you, throughout their generations, for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, as for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she will give rise to nations, kings of people shall come from her. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the book of Romans. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath. But where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham, for he is the father of us all. As it is written, <coughs> I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of God, in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of all nations, according to what was said, so numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. <clears throat> no distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, 
being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. In other words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, <coughs> but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses, and was raised for our justification. This is the word of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord is a great God. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. Hear the words of the Gospel of Mark. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will profit from them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and my words 
in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. <clears throat> I hope you will forgive me for standing here this morning looking somewhat disreputable with my flyaway locks. <laughs> now, we all know this is not what we expect from the normally impeccable turnout of the North Cheltenham team clergy but we are dictated to by events out of our control. Now, we shouldn't wish our time away, but at this instance, all I can say is, roll on April the 12th. <laughs> <laughs> now, may I speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. It's a very great privilege to be with you today as we celebrate with Father John and Hazel a very notable milestone, the diamond anniversary of Father John's priesting. Amazingly, apart from serving at Wimborne Minster from 1963 to 1966, the whole of Father John's ministry has been in within the Diocese of Gloucester. And as you can see, he's still here. <laughs> we just can't get rid of him. <laughs> and thank God for that. I first encountered John officially when he was Archdeacon of Cheltenham, a role he carried out in an exemplary manner for 10 years. I'd just been elected as church warden at St. Peter's, but was unable to attend the annual swearing in because I was on holiday. And on my return, I was summoned to present myself at Father John's home in Gloucester Road to be sworn at. <laughs> so there I was, the only one on my own, apart from the, so, from the support of my beloved wife, and naturally extremely nervous, as I found myself standing before the Venerable. That was his title as Archdeacon of Cheltenham, I'm not referring to years here. <laughs> but of course, I had nothing to worry about. Father John, in his inimitable, quiet, gracious manner, gently led me through what I thought would be an ordeal, but what in fact turned out to be a truly inspirational uh, <clears throat> happening. Now fast forward to another occasion, an Easter Sunday morning here at St Nicholas, and that was back in the days when as you stood here preaching, you were faced by a clutch of clergy. There were three of them. I hesitated to call them the three degrees, so I referred to them as, as the Holy Trinity. <laughs> there were three Johns. There were Messrs. Lewis, Mead, and Gann. They sound like a firm of solicitors, don't they? <laughs> and they would be sat there in front of you, almost expecting him to hold up mark cards to tell you how he would do it. But on that occasion, when we were having coffee afterwards, Father John quietly came up to me, and he said, that was the finest Easter day sermon I have ever heard. 
Now, imagine the feelings of a humble NSM to hear that from a man of Father John's stature, a treasured memory. And this is what Father John does, has done throughout the whole of his ministry, and is still continuing to do. Although now, of course, he is a little more venerable in years. <laughs> so we give thanks to God this morning for John and Hazel, for their time of ministry, which has given us so much love, truly a time of joy and thankfulness for us all. Now having said I found Father John to be inspirational, I'm sure that in our gospel reading this morning, Peter would have felt the same way about Jesus. So he must have been somewhat shocked to be addressed so vehemently by him. But we have to look at this incident against the background of the then common conception of the Messiah. When Jesus connected Messiahship with suffering and death, he was making statements which, to his listeners, were both incredible and incomprehensible. All their lives they'd thought of the Messiah in terms of irresistible conquest, and were now being presented with an idea which staggered them and was seemingly impossible. And that's the reason why Peter protested so strongly. But if you look further, you may ask yourself, why did Jesus in return so sternly rebuke Peter? Well, it's because Peter was putting into words the very temptations that were assailing Jesus at the moment. For here he was literally refighting the temptations of the wilderness. And through Peter, the devil, <coughs> pardon me, through Peter, the devil was tempting him again to fall down and worship him, and to take his way instead of God's way. Now in that gospel reading, there is a very stern warning here, still very relative today, in these perplexing and troublesome times. And that is that the tempter sometimes speaks to us in the voice of a well-meaning friend or a loved one, trying to dissuade us from the right path. But they do it with the best of intentions in the world and genuinely thinking they are doing what is right for us. You see, the force of evil in whatever form or shape you may conceive it to be, truly does exist in our world and comes in many shapes and guises. The tempter is subtle and he is invidious in his approach. He uses the voice of those who love us. That is precisely what happened to Jesus that day. That's why he answered Peter so strongly. And his answer shows Jesus' outstanding honesty. No one can ever say that they were induced to follow him by false pretenses. He never tried to bribe people with claims of an easy passage through this life. What he does do, however, is to seek to challenge us by the fact 
that he never calls us to do or to face anything he was not prepared to do or face for us. When we grasp that fact, then we too will be able to say, along with St. Paul, that it is no longer just he who lives, but Christ who lives in him. For in that service, we will then find our perfect freedom. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, the Lord of his sin and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Spirit, and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. The bidding today is, Lord of love and light, please hear us. Lord of love and light, please hear us. Father, we pray today for the, all those in the Presbury Parish and for the Cheltenham Diocese. We ask you to help those whose faith is constantly being challenged or undermined by the many issues brought about by the current COVID-19 situation. We share with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob as we receive through faith your promises to us all, as we rejoice in your love and salvation. Help us to live and love together in a way that may bring glory to your name. We pray that our clergy and ministry team may be inspired to build up our faith in a language that the people understand, so that we may come to know and act on your word. Lord of love and light, please hear us. Today we come to you with joy that we are inheritors of your kingdom but help us to treat this world with the much greater respect that it deserves. Guide us to become more aware of the wonder, beauty and vulnerability of your creation and help us to make every effect, effort to cherish and protect it. Lord of love and light, please, please hear us. us. Nearer to home, we thank you for our recent lockdown world, now beginning to gradually open up again. Give us patience that this may be done at a safe and regulated pace for the benefit of all. As we go through our week, we remember especially those who live in Rose Hill Court and Sackville Approach. 
May they know the peace that comes from your constant presence, and may they trust in you always. Lord of love and light, please hear us. We remember this week all those listed in our pew sheet who have need of our prayers. William and his family, Reverend Elizabeth and Reverend Howard, Father Mike, Father Paul, Martin, Di, who's Grania, Hazel, Peter, Ruth, Simon, Jessica and family, as well as any others only known to us who need your help. We call to mind all those who we have known and loved, who have lived amongst us and recently died. Olivia Sybil Davis, Heather Hawker, Anne Brooks, Eric John Hawker, Robert Hamilton, Tom Fisher, and Chris Vile. We pray for those who mourn their deaths. Let us now pray for those whose anniversary of death is today. Claudine Vizard, Dorothy Barnes, Evelyn Wheeler, Ronald Cresswell, and Violet Kerr. We ask that all who depart may be safely led through that last journey to the peace and joy of eternal God. Lord of love and light, please hear us. Now let us finish by focusing our thoughts towards you, Lord, and ask that we may listen and look where you will direct us during the coming week. Merciful Father, since we are justified by faith in <coughs> peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We offer one another a sign of peace according to COVID.
our praise is heavenly father through your son our saviour jesus christ and as we follow his example and, and obey his commands granted by the power of your holy spirit these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and his blood <coughs> who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks he broke it gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept to him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us 
in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, and all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Man of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Man of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be
Almighty God, you see that we have no power of ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body, and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Father of all,
be any notices. Right, thank you. You'll be here, pleased to hear not very much from me today. Um, uh, there's a new magazine out, so get yours um, on your way out, please. It's only one pound. On, on the notice board outside, there are some pretty pictures about um, the, the Lenten journey, finding directions, compass. Um, so have a look at that when you, when you have a chance. All, all the other notices are in the pew sheet that you've got on your desk. And in particular, there's advance notice of what we're hoping to put on at Easter. Um, Hazel, could you... Um, <laughs> yes? Father <laughs> <laughs> on behalf of everybody here at St Nicholas, um, many congratulations, John, on 60 years of preaching. It's a very notable achievement. Well done. And we've got a little something for you. to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.